In this lesson, we're going to cover how to assemble the FC8600, discuss some precautions, and then set up the computer and plotter to make sure they are communicating with each other. Let's go over some general precautions. When preparing to assemble the machine, try to get someone to help you. Also, when placing the cutter, make sure it's in a dust-free and dry environment and won't be in direct sun. Make sure there's a rated power outlet near its location and that it is grounded properly. It's best to make sure there's enough room around the device, at least two feet. It makes it easier when you're loading material onto the cutter. It also allows rolls of material to move freely without running into obstacles. Here are some precautions to follow when maintaining the product. First, don't clean with solvents. Use a dry cloth or a cloth that has been dampened with a neutral detergent that has been diluted with water. Don't use oil to lubricate any of the parts. If something goes wrong, don't try to repair the unit. Contact your dealer first or contact Graftech. Here are some precautions when using the product. First, handle the blades with care. They're small and easy to lose, and they are very sharp. When setting the blade depth, take care not to extend the blade too far. If the blade is overextended, there is the likely chance that it will cut through the backing of the material and can damage the Teflon mat. Learning how to install the blade properly will be covered later in this lesson. As with any piece of machinery, don't get too close to the moving parts. Inevitably, something will get torn, pulled, or stuck. All FC8600 models have a similar process to building the stand, so we will cover building the FC8600-60. To build the stand, first unbox all the parts and pieces to the stand. Keep in mind that some of the stand parts, such as the screws, are located in the main cutter box. When gathering all the parts for the stand, keep the cutter in the box for right now. Lay each piece of the stand out on carpeted ground to prevent scratches. Let's identify the different components. There are the two stand legs, the two footers, the center crossmember bar, two stock roller plates, two media stock rollers, 20 M5 socket head cap screws, and an Allen wrench. Keep in mind the basket assembly will be in a separate box. First, mount both stand legs to the cross member using four M5 socket head screws. As you mount the cross member to each stand leg, do not tighten the screws completely. We will tighten them after we place the cutter on the stand and it has been properly seated. Place the stand upside down so that the footers can be mounted. And then mount the footer to the bottom of each stand leg. Mount the footers so that the longer ends of the footers are facing in the same direction. Next, remove the cutter from the box. The FC8600 can be mounted to the stand in two configurations. Backloaded, where the media roll is to be placed in the back and travels toward the front of the cutter, or front-loaded, where the media roll is placed in the front of the cutter and travels toward the back of the cutter. If you plan to have the media roller in the back, place the front of the cutter facing toward the shorter end of the footer. Conversely, if you plan to have the media roll in the front, set the front of the cutter so it is facing the same direction as the longer ends of the footers. Place the FC8600 onto the stand so that the positioning pins match up with the holes on the FC8600. And then fasten with the four M5 socket head screws. At this point, tighten the four socket head cap screws using the provided Allen wrench. And then tighten the four socket head cap screws on both legs. In the basket assembly, there should be the basket made of fabric, three long basket tubes, four short basket tubes, four corner joints, two mounting brackets, four M5 socket cap head screws. First, locate the media stocker plates and mount the mounting brackets to the bottom of each stock roller plate using four M5 mounting screws. 
Mount the two media stalker plates with the attached mounting brackets to the inside of each stand leg on the underside of the cutter. Insert one screw in the front. Make sure when mounting them that they face the direction of the longer footer stems. Notice that the longer end of the footer is always under the stock rollers and media. Insert two shorter tubes in the top holes of the bracket so that the open ends of the tubes are facing toward the front and the ends with the caps are facing toward the back for both sides. Remember the top tubes should be open and the bottom tube should have a cap. Take the three long basket tubes and insert them into the sheaths on the edges of the basket and one in the center sheath. Now locate the joints and insert them into the ends of the longer tubes. Grab the basket with the long tubes. Go ahead and place the center tube in the slot on the bracket. Insert the corners that are inserted in the longer tubes and insert them in the shorter tubes. Now connect the short basket tubes to the joints inserted on the long basket tubes at each end of the basket. For the last step, gently remove the packaging from the cutter itself. Next, plug in the power cord to the right side of the cutter, and then plug it into the wall power outlet, but keep it turned off for right now. Next, take the blade holder out of the box. Hold it in your hand and remove the cap. Now locate the CB09U blade, which is packed in a plastic container. Remove the blade and insert it into the blade holder cap, inserting the blade tip first. Carefully press the blade into the cap to ensure that it is seated properly. Then carefully mount the cap onto the blade holder. As mentioned earlier, the blade should only extend to the thickness of the media. This may seem to be a daunting task, but it's not really. To extend the blade, start by turning the adjustment knob clockwise until the blade is barely sticking out, barely visible. Next, take a piece of vinyl and lay it flat on a table. Then with the blade holder tool in your hand, draw a circle on the vinyl. Go ahead and remove the circle. If it is difficult to remove, then extend the blade by turning the blue adjustment knob one quarter of an inch clockwise and repeat the test. Next, reach on the back side of the media or vinyl and with your hand try to push up from the back side of the vinyl underneath the cut circle. If it pops out easily, then the blade is extended too far. Retract the blade by turning the blue adjustment knob one quarter of an inch counterclockwise and repeat the test. Once the blade is installed and adjusted, it can be mounted onto the tool carriage. To do this, loosen the tool carriage screw, making sure the little C-clamp is out of the way. You'll notice that there are two positions or slots that the blade can be mounted onto. For normal cutting, mount the blade holder into the back slot. The front slot is for cutting completely through the backing. Go ahead and push the blade holder all the way down until the rim or flange on the blade holder is completely seated and is under the C-clamp. Tighten the tool carriage screw, making sure that the C-clamp is above the rim of the blade holder. If it's above the C-clamp, then it will not cut. Before we go any further, let's get familiar with the FC8600 cutter. Starting at the front, on the right hand side is the control panel. We'll go over this in greater detail later, but this is where we can control the different functions of the cutter. On the left side of the control panel, down towards the middle, is where the media is loaded and cut. On the top side of that area are the push rollers. On every cutter, you'll have two outside push rollers, and except for the FC8660 and the FC8675, there will be one or more push rollers in the middle. 
The purpose of these rollers is to push down on the vinyl material to hold it in place while it is being cut. These don't actually drive the material back and forth, but they hold the material against the grid rollers on the bottom. When the push rollers are lowered, the grit rollers are what drive the material back and forth. These can be repositioned according to the size of the material. This means that in order for the media to move during the cutting operation, the push rollers have to be directly over the grit rollers. We'll be covering the push rollers in detail in the lesson on the cutter operation. Just behind the control panel is the media set lever. This lever is what raises and lowers the push rollers onto the grit rollers. When the lever is pushed back, this raises the push rollers. It is only in this position that the media can be loaded. At the back end of the cutter are the media stock rollers. This is where you place your rolls of media or material. Finally, on top of the unit, there's a channel for a very handy purpose. It's where you can place all your tools, your X-Acto knives, cutting tools if you have more than one, scissors, and other tools. Let's start by turning on the power and configuring the cutter to connect with the computer. The control panel will indicate that before we go on, we need to load the media. If you have a roll, place it on the media stock rollers in the back. Unlatch or raise the push roller wheels by moving the media latch lever backwards. Take the front edge of the media and place it through the back opening and advance it through the front. Once the media is inserted into the cutter, move the push rollers to each side of the media. Their location is not that important except that, as mentioned, they each need to be directly over the grit rollers. The black tape indicators just above the push rollers locate the grit rollers. This next step is an important one when trying to align a roll. Take the front edge of the media with one hand and hold the roll in the back with the other. While holding the roll, pull the front edge to make the media taut. This helps the media to be straight. If you have a sheet of media, align the sheet by using the ribs found on the front panel of the cutter. Once the media is straight, hold it against the front panel to keep it in place. And then set the media set lever. Once the media set lever is up and the push rollers are down, the control panel display will show three options. Roll 1, Roll 2, and Sheet. These options will be explained later, so for right now, let's select Roll 2. The cutter will start to initialize by first locating the push rollers. After the initialization, the tool carriage will be parked in the home position, which is on the right-hand side of the cut area near the control panel. The control panel will then show that it is in ready mode. The length unit is the unit of measurement we'd like to use. In this case, we will be setting it to inches, but it is also possible to set it in millimeters if you prefer. Generally, the default is set to around 7 feet. We'd like to increase this setting to where it's long enough so we never have to worry about it. To set the unit of measurement to inches, press the menu key. This will set the cutter in a pause mode so that we can adjust some of the cutter's settings. On the screen, there will be several choices. Most of these will be discussed in later lessons, but for now, let's click on the down arrow key. Press the three key for length unit. Press the two key to switch the unit of measurement to inches. And then press the enter key. Next is to set the page length. First, let's get back to the main menu by pressing the left arrow key. Next, press the 4 key for media. Press the 3 key for page length. Now press the up arrow key to increase the value to a little over 1200 inches, which will give us 100 feet to work with. As you can see, this is a little slow, but if we press the fast key, we can increase the increments to a higher value. In this case, we'll increase it to 400 inch increments at a time. Now when we press the up arrow, Notice the value significantly increasing each time the up arrow is pressed. Once the value is set, press enter to accept the change. Finally, we need to set the command language. So let's get back to the main menu once again by pressing the left arrow key once. 
Next, press the up arrow key for I slash F, or interface, and then press the 1 key for command. There are two command languages that the plotter accepts, GPGL or HPGL. GraphTech software such as the GraphTech Studio and Cutting Master 3 will always output in GPGL. Third-party software packages such as FlexiSign or SignLab will output in HPGL. Check your software manual for details. If you are still unsure, press the 3 key for Auto or Automatic. In this case, we'll be using GPGL, so we can press the 1 key, and then press Enter which accepts the change. This will return us to the default menu. If you choose GPGL, you may want to set the step size. Step size is another word for resolution. To get to that menu, press the menu key. Press the up arrow key for I slash F, and then press the 4 key for step size. In this menu there are four choices. The choice we want is 1016. This will give us good resolution with reasonable speed. Something important to remember is that the resolution set here has to reflect the resolution in the software. Some software applications will automatically set this for you. Refer to your software manual for details and set it accordingly. Once again, press Enter to accept the change. Press the left arrow key and then press Menu. Now that the cutter is set up to communicate with the computer, let's turn the cutter off. Next, take the communication cable that you plan to use, whether USB, serial, or Ethernet cable, and plug one end into the computer. Plug the other end into the plotter, but do not turn the cutter on. And as an added step, go ahead and take the cutting tool out of the tool carriage for right now. Next, we'll install the GraphTech software. We won't install all of it since we'll cover this in later lessons. To start, insert the FC8600 DVD into the DVD drive. Click Run Multisetup.exe. You may get this user account control message asking if it is OK to install the Multisetup application. Click Yes. This will open the FC8600 software installation application. Click on the Install FC8600 Software button and follow the step-by-step -step process. At this point, the installation program is asking if you'd like to install the FC8600 driver. Click OK. Click Next and Next again. This window will open up asking what port will be used to communicate to the cutter. Choose the port you'll be using. In our case, we will be using the USB port. And then click Next. Once the driver is installed, click OK. This will bring us back to the main menu. Click Exit. Finally, turn the cutter on. Initialize the cutter by pressing the 2 key for Roll 2 on the control panel. After the cutter initializes, the final step is to test the communications between the computer and the cutter by using the plotter controller to send a test cut. To open the plotter controller, click Start at the bottom of your PC window. Then click All Programs. Scroll down the list to find GraphTech Cutting Plotter Controller for FC8600. Click on the folder, and then click on the application. This will start the Cutting Plotter Controller, or Controller for short. When the Plotter Controller window opens, click the Test Cut button, and then click OK. At this point, the tool head should be moving as if it were cutting. If you do get movement, then go ahead and mount the blade holder tool. If it doesn't move, then there are a couple things you can check. First, make sure that the cutter is turned on and is in ready mode. Next, check the cable to make sure it is plugged in correctly to both the cutter and the computer. If it still doesn't work for some reason, review the steps we have just covered to make sure a step wasn't missed. If you still have issues, contact your dealer where you bought the cutter, or contact GraphTech's technical support department at 888-318-3247.